Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's Kativ's Not Autodesk Virtual Academy. Today, we actually have a special webinar for you um, regarding everything you need to know about Autodesk licensing options, as well as uh, giving you a first look at the Autodesk Industry Collections, which were just announced uh, about two weeks ago. So for uh, those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Nigel Ambayek, and I am a uh, application engineer here on the Lifeline team, which is our support here at Kativ. Uh, I'm joined with special guest uh, Joe Meradian, who is a, a subscription manager here at Kativ, as well as uh, Jorge Fernandez, who's a manufacturing solutions engineer, who uh, has been on a couple of these webcasts before. So, uh, Joe, welcome. Welcome, Jorge. Thank you, guys. So, uh, just to give a little background on what we're going to do today, we'll go over a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, uh, your Autodesk licensing options for uh, today, moving forward, uh, as well as we're going to do the introduction to the industry collections. We'll show you everything you need to know um, about that. Uh, we'll go through uh, our current promotions, some next steps, maybe some things you want to look into um, in regards to moving forward, and uh, Q&A. So um, in regards to Q&A, remember that uh, you can definitely type any question that you have in the GoToWebinar questions panel on your screen, and uh, a couple of us will moderate that during the session. Uh, we'll, some, we'll answer some of those questions individually, as well as uh, answer a couple of questions that we feel uh, benefit everybody at the end during that dedicated section of the webinar. So um, without further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, give it to Joe. Hi, good morning again, everyone. Um, you know, welcome to the presentation. Our, our goal today is really to, to help you understand the different options that you have available to you now and uh, in the future as well. You know, it's a very important topic and I just wanna make sure that we give you all the facts surrounding this transition to the, the subscription-based licensing. You know, we're in the tail end of the shift and uh, you know, we really wanna make sure that you understand what that means as far as the facts go, but also what it means to you as a customer. It's hard to believe that it's been two years, over two years since Autodesk announced that the, the desktop subscription option will be available. You know, back in March, 2014, uh, they made it apparent that they are going to offer a new form of licensing by way of peer subscription. Uh, so it's, it's been about two years since they announced that. And uh, we got a timeline that I want to walk you through so you fully understand exactly the, the changes that have happened. You can understand, uh, you know, where where we've come from and where we're going to end up in the next couple of weeks here. Uh, so, Nigel, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So, as I mentioned, March 2014, desktop subscription was introduced. So before this, the only the only available option you had was to buy a license in perpetual a perpetual license, and uh, then you had the option to add maintenance subscription. So this changed when Autodesk came out with a new uh, business plan, essentially that said you can rent software licenses for a specific amount of time. Now we're going to go through what that entails and, and the details of that in a moment here, but I want to let you know uh, that we've been communicating this message, Autodesk has been commuting this message for, for over two years now. Um, so some of you may be surprised, a lot of you might be uh, informed, but uh, we're going to tie up any loose ends and make sure that everyone on this is, is well informed moving forward. Um, so, so they announced that in 2014, they did a year of analysis and they, they came back and noticed that it was being adopted by their customers and our customers a lot faster than they anticipated. And uh, there were some issues with the way that they, they had to deliver perpetual licenses of software versus subscription licenses of software. So after a year of this, they decided that, you know, we're going to move forward with one business model. It's being widely adopted by most of our customers right now anyways. And this is the future of Autodesk. So uh, fast forward to March 2015, they announced that they are going to be uh, phasing out perpetual licenses over the next year and a half. And uh, when they did that, they gave us two very important dates. One of those dates have passed. So January 31st, 2016 was the last day that you can buy perpetual licenses of non-suite or individual products. Products like AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit, Inventor. All of those products were available to purchase perpetually up until that point. After that, they went to a subscription-based licensing model only. And when, when this was announced between March 2015 and January 31st, 2016, our job was really to, to make customers uh, fully informed of this shift and, and really help you understand uh, you know, what it's all about. But more importantly, plan with you your needs for current needs, future needs, and address those needs while we still had multiple options to do so. 
Uh, so, you know, January 31st, 2016 has come and gone. The next major date that we have to look forward to is July 31st. July 31st is the last day you can buy perpetual licenses or suites on subscription uh, for any product. So anything that's left over, there's some simulation tools, some data management tools you can still buy perpetually. All the suites are still available. Um, so, so, you know, we still have a, multiple options as we move forward. Uh, however, that is not going to be the case in about seven weeks. So what a lot of our customers are doing right now is they're preparing for growth. They know that they're going to acquire a couple more licenses because they have a few more engineers that are going to be needed. Uh, you know, they're going to be hired in the next 12 to 18 months. So in preparation for that, if they uh, prefer the perpetual license model, they're actually acquiring more licenses today. And we're going to get a little bit into that a little bit deeper uh, in a few minutes here. Um, one thing that was announced three weeks ago, Autodesk announced industry collections. So these are going to be the new offering after August 1st, 2016. So Jorge is actually going to give us a first look into these industry collections in a minute here. But what you need to know is they have been announced. However, they're not available for purchase yet. So today you have the option to subscribe via a subscription to pretty much any product that Autodesk offers with the exception of industry collections. You also have the option to purchase perpetual licenses of the suite products, Vault, which is a data management tool, simulation, and some other tools as well you can still purchase perpetually. Uh, but it, moving forward, you know, in the next seven weeks, that will not be available. Industry collections are going to become available August 1st, 2016. Uh, so between now and then, you know, you have multiple options that do not include those. However, those will be the only option moving forward uh, for purchasing multiple products at a time after August 1st, 2016. Uh, so, you know, looking at the attendance here, I can see that most, if not all of you, have a perpetual license and you may have had a, a maintenance plan. Uh, maintenance used to be called maintenance subscription. That might be a term that you're familiar with. Uh, but what that is, is it goes hand in hand with a perpetual license of software. So if you have a perpetual license, that means that the license is your license. You own the rights to that license forever. It is yours. A maintenance plan keeps that perpetual license current. Uh, so as long as you keep that maintenance up to date, that perpetual license will continue to get the latest software releases. You have no need to buy another perpetual license as long as you have the maintenance plan because you already have the newest versions available to you. Uh, in addition to that, you have the license ownership. So you again, you have the rights to this license. You own it. Whether or not you have a maintenance plan, it's a perpetual license. It's yours to use for as long as you like. In addition to that, there are select Autodesk cloud services. And everyone that has a maintenance plan gets 25 gigabytes of cloud storage. You get rendering tools in the cloud. You get collaboration tools. You get viewers. Uh, there's a lot of tools that many of you may not be aware of that you already own today uh, that can really help you, you know, manage or collaborate with uh, other locations, your customers, whether it be you know, loading your renderings of your models onto an iPad and taking that to a customer site to show them. Uh, so there's, there's tools like that. And finally, you, you all have technical support. You get basic technical support from Autodesk. So if you have any issues with the software, you can email them or log a case online and they'll respond within 24 hours via email. Uh, most of our customers decide that they want a little bit more than that because some of the problems are, are complex. You know, these are complex tools that, uh, you know, sometimes require a little bit of support on. So Kativ has a program completely separate of the Autodesk maintenance plan called Kativ Lifeline. And what that gives you is phone support directly with our in-house Lifeline team. So we have a dedicated team. Their only responsibility is to work with our customers you know, get their licenses up and running, installations, downloads, activations, all of that. But more in depth, the, the harder problems, you know, the, the troubleshooting inventor or Revit, you know, any issues like that, you can call us directly and we will help you right away. Most of our cases are resolved within an hour. Some of the more complex cases, you know, we can bring to Autodesk, but we will work on that right away. And uh, in addition to the support, you know, you get discounts on training and you get access to events and, and other things like that. But just know that that's a separate uh, program, other separate from maintenance, uh, that we, we provide to our customers for an additional level of support. 
You know, the next thing I want to talk about uh, that may be a little less familiar with you is subscription. And subscription is what was introduced in March 2014. So what this is, is it's a term-based licensing model. So you only pay for the time of use that you need the tool. Uh, what's really good about this is it's a lot more flexible. You know, it has similar benefits to the maintenance plan. So you get previous version use, you get support, you get the cloud benefits, you get all of that. But in addition, uh, you know, you, you get the benefit of having a lower cost of entry. So, you know, it's summer's coming up right now. We have a lot of companies we work with that hire you know, a couple summer interns. And uh, in the past, their only way to get those interns a license was to purchase a perpetual license, maintain it annually, and it wasn't very cost effective for them. Now you have the option, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have an intern for three or four months, you can rent a license for three or four months. You know, so it's, it's really easy to do that and it's a lot more cost effective for the business. At the end of the term, you can renew it if you want to, otherwise you can just let it go and pick it up when you need it. Because of that, it's easy to ramp up and ramp down. We have a lot of customers that they're project based, you know, so they might have five engineers normally. However, when they get a big project, they might bring a couple more in and rather than buying, you know, expensive perpetual licenses, they can rent the licenses for that time. So it's easy to scale up, scale down. Uh, and then finally is reduce risk. You know, because of the inherent nature of them being a lower cost of entry, you're, you're throwing, you know, you're, you're spending more capital to, uh, you know, gain the tools that you need. In addition, uh, the subscription licenses have a built-in license management program. So what's great about them is it's a little bit easier to remain in compliance. You don't have to worry and, and, and do internal audits, things like that to yourself to make sure that everyone is using the licenses within compliance. It, it's all handled for you. And we're gonna get into that a little bit later, um, but that, those are the main components of the subscription license. Now, just to reiterate, this is available today. This will continue to be available even past the industry collections for individual products. Um, anyone that has a subscription today or is planning on purchase one, purchasing one in the next couple months, definitely do that. There's going to be a very easy and reasonable way for you to migrate from what you currently have to the industry collection. In fact, for people with products, you know, for premium and ultimate suites, they're allowing you to migrate to the industry collections at no charge. Uh, and we'll get the more details on that a little bit later. You know, we haven't gotten all the information, but it's going to be very easy for you to take advantage of the industry collections uh, when you want to. So you don't have to hold off on purchasing anything now if you need it. Uh, you'll be able to migrate to that, to the, the, the new offering at a later date. Um, this is a, a little bit more about subscription. So I mentioned that they're flexible. They're flexible for the amount of time that you can use them, uh, but they're also flexible for the, the number of users that uh, can use them. So what's different between this and a perpetual license is it's the, the licenses are tied to the user. So each user gets their own login. Uh, you can have multiple users for one software license. They just can't use them concurrently. However, uh, when you do that, it allows Autodesk to give some additional personalization touches to your own login account. And, and that will allow you to customize your interface a little bit better to suit your needs. You know, not everyone's the same by any means. Uh, so that's one thing that this is going to allow you to do. Autodesk has promised to work on this and, and to improve this over the next couple of years and, and make the user experience a lot more personal and a lot uh, easier for you to adopt new tools and, and to find tools that you already use. Uh, another thing that's great about the subscription is real-time updates. So in the past with the perpetual license, you can, you know, Autodesk releases one new update a year and then there's service packs. But the problem is, is it's one update uh, throughout the year and it becomes kind of an event to migrate to the newest version. So, you know, when the new version comes out 2017, if you have data management installed, if you have multiple users that are using 2017 or 2016 and you want to go to 2017, it, it might be a little bit daunting of a task to take on. And one of the, the benefits of having a subscription contract is that you can do this. Uh, they're going to make these updates a little bit more natural. They're going to make them a little bit more frequent so you can take advantage of the tools at a, uh, you know, a better easier way to do so. And then immediate fulfillment. So everything now that Autodesk offers can be downloaded online. 
and you don't have to wait you know multiple weeks to get media shipped to you so it's, it's very easy to download software we help our customers do that and uh, it, it makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, you know get the new tools faster um, so what I want to point out now is is kind of go back to this timeline you know you see the the titles that have been grayed out these are what we have passed up uh, these are no longer available. You can no longer buy you know, perpetual licenses for individual products. Looking forward, though, we have seven weeks until we the end of sale of perpetual licenses for sweet products, also for, for subscription licenses of sweet products. New purchases of those will be available for the next seven weeks. After that, they will no longer be available. Now, let me make sure that you understand that correctly is anything that is existing, if you have an existing maintenance plan, if you have an existing subscription license, you will be able to continue to renew that for as long as you'd like. Autodesk does not plan on changing that. However, they are going to allow you to migrate to an industry collection if you want to. There, we haven't got all the details on how that's gonna be accomplished yet, but they've promised to make it very easy and reasonable to migrate what you have to an industry collections if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can continue on like nothing has changed and continue to renew and keep your existing licenses current. So, you know, really the next thing we wanna talk about is industry collections. I'm gonna pass that on to, to Jorge, who is a manufacturing specialist here at Cativ. He's been with us for a, for a while now and, and he's worked with many of our customers. Uh, on the technical side, as well as, as, as helping them understand what the best decisions are for them. So I'm going to have Jorge talk to you a little bit about industry collections, and um, he'll, he'll get you a first look at that. So Jorge, go ahead and, and uh, talk a little bit about industry collections. All right. Thanks, Joe. Good morning, everybody, and uh, also uh, maybe good afternoon to some of you. But uh, as we're getting ready for this webinar, you know, I was thinking about one of the roles here at Kativ as your partner that I have is to educate our customers, to educate you on the tools you have available and how you can continue to strive and work more efficiently and make informed decisions on everything, right? So I'm really excited here to share with you what the, some of the future things that Autodesk is, is going to do for us with industry collections. So first let's talk about what, why industry collections. So what Autodesk has done is they've, they've looked at the different offerings we have in architectural, engineering, construction, in uh, product design, in media and entertainment even, and, and looked at, well, what are the tools that most people use? And In some cases, they might use some a little bit more than the other, you know, in some cases maybe not, at, um, not even use some of the tools, but other tools that you wouldn't even have thought about, right? So the idea is to give you a more simplified package, for example. Uh, where, where you're able to um, take a collection of the tools that you'll need for your industry. Instead of having to choose, well, do I want standard, do I want premium, do I want ultimate, which one's the right decision technically? So they've simplified that. In a, and in a moment, we'll discuss the different products that are part of a collection that we're calling. The other thing is to give you more continuous improvement. So just like uh, Joe was starting to tell you guys, we want to make sure that you get the things you need in a timely manner. I mean, let's let's take advantage, right, of the cloud and the capabilities of being able to download things instantly. You know, prior, maybe some of you might remember there's R2 and R3 releases that get um, sent out throughout the year. Well, now I'll just make it available for you because, you know, you have more cloud access. You have the ability to bring these updates down quickly using, like, the Autodesk uh, app, for example. And then also giving you more flexibility and choices and giving you greater value and being able to choose the products that you need when you need them, right? So that you're able to just pick the right licensing model you need and then just run with it. Give your engineers, give the drafters, the different people that are involved in design the ability to access the tools that they need when they need them. So those are some of the reasons of why Autodesk is, is, is uh, going with the industry collections to give you, again, the flexibility to choose the tools you need uh, when you need them. Uh, and, and we'll take a look at those tools exactly in just a moment. Before we go into the actual, um, the actual uh, different tools that you have available to you, let's talk a little bit about the process of picking what industry collection you're going to have. And also talk a little bit about, you know, let's pause for a moment and think of the way we pick 
the tools today, right? There's usually the standard, premium, and ultimate suites, right? The first thing you have to do a lot of the times is say, well, okay, there's these different suites. I need to figure out which one I need. So what do the different suites do? So we go and we talk a little bit more about that. And then the next thing is, well, that's great. You know, I want someone to be able to do AutoCAD Electrical. Maybe I want someone to be able to do some FEI analysis. But then I have another person who needs to do some tube and pipe, you know, and you have this mixed environment of different people with different needs. So it can be maybe a little cumbersome sometimes to try and figure out which one's the right one to buy, right? And then after that, then you go into this process now, but we've taken that away because now you'll have the ability to just say, I'm a product design collection user and I will just choose the, the, the programs that I need, right? So we take that guesswork at the beginning away now by now saying, well, here's the simplified version of this Autodesk subscription that you're going to choose. First, you select your product. So meaning, are you going to select, maybe this person is only going to use Inventor and that's it. Then you can do that too, right? Or this person is only going to use AutoCAD, you can go with that as well. Or you decide this person needs to use more than one of these tools. So it's going to be more cost effective for me to be able to say, let's give them access to an industry collection to be able to choose the tools. The next step in this would be, well, now let me select what type of access do I want. So for those of you that might be wondering, well, am I still going to be able to have network licenses and standalone? That's kind of the way to think about it here. The, the, but traditionally, uh, we use the name standalone for people that we have uh, single user access. They install on one computer, they're able to take advantage and you know um, have it on that one computer, maybe a home computer, and keep using the tools. And then we, we traditionally have the network licensing uh, access as well, where we have a license file. People have access to it when they want. We call that multi-user access. So you still have that capability. One of the things this is also going to give you is if it, any of you on the, on the line here are IT um, uh, folks, CAD managers, or people that are in charge of the licenses, this is going to give you much better grasp as far as who has access to what licenses because now you'll be able to assign names to them with single user access, for example. So there's no you know, loss in translation or where's that Excel sheet where I kept those. You'll be able to log into your, um, your manage.autodesk.com and be able to see who you want to give access to these different types of licenses. And then lastly, you can now choose, well, you know, is this going to be a project-based purchase that I'm creating right now? Am I hiring an intern and I only want them to be able to have this license for three months, for example, and get it for just a quarter? You now have that flexible purchase this license when I actually need it. You know, it might be that the project is going to be locked in for three years, definitely. So let me lock in those rates and get a multi-year license as well. So again, the ability to create, get the subscriptions that you need has have been simplified, taking some guesswork out of it. You know, we'll still talk, of course, about which tools you want to take advantage of uh, when, once you adopt it, but now you have a much bigger range of tools to choose from. So let's talk a little bit more about what those tools are. So as I mentioned, there's uh, architecture, engineering, construction, AC collections, there's product design collections, and media and entertainment. So let's talk about a few examples uh, so we understand a little bit more about how these were designed and, and how you can take advantage of them. Traditionally, for those of you that have purchased product prior, uh, you would decide, you know, if my factory design suite, is it, is it uh, standard, ultimate, or premium in my product design suite? Wait, I kind of need both actually because that has the other tools I need. Now we've taken some of that out, right? Now you have the ability to say, I'm a product design, uh, a product design collection user you may not need the factory design suite for the entire year. You might just say, well, I, I'm not creating multiple layouts, but I need to create one you know, site plan for us and be able to create that and maintain it. So you can use, if you look at the list here in the middle, you'll notice factory design utilities. You'll actually get factory design suite as part of the capabilities you have as a design collection user. You know, if you're an electrical person and you sometimes need to dabble a little bit in the 3D space, you'll have the access to AutoCAD Electrical and Inventor. And by the way, let me take that a step further. For those of you that weren't sure, well, should I go with Ultimate so I can do some FVA in Inventor? Should I go with Ultimate to start using wire harnessing? Well, the answer is just go with the collection and you will get Inventor Professional. There's no longer Inventor Standard, 
or a mentor professional, you will get a mentor professional. Everyone will have access to be able to take advantage of the different tools that come with professionals, such as FVA analysis um, for static and modal analysis. You'll get access to wire harness design, tube and pipe design, and even tooling for plastic part design. You notice there's even a cloud option here, so you'll be able to realize the different options you have with cloud, like rendering in A360, extra storage space instead of using Dropbox, for example, or trying to to purchase more data on you know another way of being able to share information. You'll be able to take advantage of the cloud capabilities inside of here. Now, let me also talk for some of you that are on the line here that are um, AEC, Architecture, Engineering, and Construction. You, we have a collection for you as well where now you don't have to think about, well, how exactly am I going to collaborate with that Revit guy? I'd love to have Revit and just open up something. I've seen people even download trials of it just to do that really quickly, right? Now you'll have access to it. Now you can say, oh, you know what? I need to use Revit too. And you can download it and start using it in your process, collaborate much more, uh, uh, much better with the different disciplines that you'll be um, working with. You know, if you're uh, working in Plat, for example, and PNID, sometimes there's some overlap there as well, right, where you need to communicate maybe with the architect and be able to open a Revit model. Or maybe you need to work with the civil, the civil person as well and understand the different gradings of where you're going to be working as well. Or the mechanical electrical plumbing that's going to happen as well and, and be able to collaborate and do class detection. You'll be able to do these different things now in-house instead of having to figure out a way to collaborate, right? So again, this adds greater value in giving you access to cutting edge technology and being able to make sure you're also flexible and being able, being able to use these different tools that you have available to you. Make it a much more simpler as well to, to choose, well, I'm in this collection and I can choose which products I want to use. In the long run, what this is going to do for you is you know, make you more successful and be able to adopt uh, a lot more of the pr different workflows that you'll want to have to collaborate whether you're internal or external, right? So these are some of the benefits here of using the industry collections. Uh, I, I think I've spoken to some of our customers actually where it'll make sense to move from you know the suites to an industry collection so you have more capabilities, you have the opportunity to take advantage of tools that you otherwise might have just thought about and not actually gone with, right? So the industry collections is a, a really great way to be able to take advantage of the different tools you've been wanting to use. Uh, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll uh, pass it over to Joe and he'll talk to you a little bit more about how you can take advantage of some of the benefits we have today, uh, as well as uh, help us wrap this up. Yeah, thank you, Jorge. And uh, I just, I want to reiterate the fact that, uh, you know, everything that Jorge just covered will be available in about seven weeks on August 1st, 2016. Uh, today, these industry collections are not available. However, Autodesk has promised a very easy path to migrate from what you currently have or what you're about to purchase uh, to these industry collections when they do become available. So if you have needs for licensing now, do not hesitate to reach out to us, ask any questions. Uh, you know, we're more than happy to to put something together that works specifically for you and your organization. Uh, you know, not everybody is the same, and that's kind of where we come in is, is to work with you and, and make sure that you are fully informed of all the options and, and make the most informed decision that's best for your company. Uh, so with that being said, you know, Autodesk has different promotions uh, about once a quarter, and the quarter, the promotion that they have going on right now is if you have a maintenance or subscription contract that is due for renewal, uh, you can renew that and save up to 40% off of select software. So what that means is let's say you have a maintenance contract that expires in two months. Uh, you're thinking about adding some more vault data management licenses into your existing pool, or you're thinking about a, including you know, the Autodesk data management solution into your, your company for the first time. You can get 40% off either perpetual or subscription licenses to vault between now and July 22nd, 2016. Uh, so we do have, you know, some time pretty much right up to the end of when we're going to be able to offer perpetual licenses for you to take advantage of this 40% savings. Again, this goes hand in hand with an existing renewal for a perpetual maintenance contract or for a subscription license. Uh, if you do not have one of those, uh, you may not qualify. However, if you have anything in question, if you want to know, 
feel free to reach out to me, your Lifeline representative, your account manager will be more than happy to do that. Uh, but just so you know, you know, we're going to send the full list of the promotions to you soon. Uh, but there's tools like Simulation, Nasdaq, and CAD for advanced FEA. You know, very great product that a lot of our customers are adopting uh, at a high rate. There's tools like Vault Data Management that I mentioned. There's tools like Navisworks Manage for some of the, the AEC individuals on this presentation. Uh, so there are some really good tools. It's, it's uh, definitely something to consider. Um, so, you know, after going, going through this, I really, um, you know, want to make sure that we address some of the, the future needs um, and, and really go over what we see our customers doing now and uh, what we really recommend doing um, right now and, and with through the end of this, uh, you know, through the end of July. So it's the last chance to buy perpetual licenses. If you have a pool of perpetual licenses, you don't want anything to change, you want that to stay the same and remain perpetual, remain on maintenance, you can add perpetual licenses for the next seven weeks, add a maintenance plan to them. Uh, again, if you have any questions or lists of anything like that, we're gonna, you know, feel free to put them into the Q&A box uh, on the right panel and uh, or contact us directly. One thing that we haven't talked about yet is networking existing licenses. So Autodesk will allow you to network an existing perpetual license for products that are still available to buy perpetually. What that means is if you have a product design suite and you want to convert it from a standalone deployment to a network deployment, or what Autodesk now calls multi-user deployment, you have the availability to do that through the end of July. What that allows you to do is plan for growth without acquiring an additional license. It's more cost effective than acquiring additional license. People that this is good for are people that have multiple time zones throughout their company. You know, maybe you have a couple licenses or a couple uh, engineers on the West Coast and a couple on the East Coast. There's a, a three lap, three hour overlap there uh, where you can share licenses back and forth. Uh, in addition, if you have users that use licenses maybe 60% of the time or less, network licenses are a really cost-effective way to make sure that you, uh, you know, uh, can, can share the tools that you need when you need them. In addition, network licenses are actually a lot easier to remain compliant in. You know, there's a built-in license manager similar to the way that the subscription licenses work that prevents multiple people from accessing the same license at the same time. Again, that's, uh, that's very huge because, you know, compliance agencies uh, do look to, to poke holes into some organizations, and uh, that's really one thing that we do, do not want you to have to go through. Um, so networking licensing, network licensing, it goes a, a further step and helps you protect your compliancy and, and make sure that you're up to date on that. Um, Excuse me. So feel free to reach out about that as well. And then a third thing that we're seeing a lot of our customers do is lock in their maintenance subscription for multiple years. Uh, so you can, if you have an existing maintenance plan, you can renew that for up to three years, which will lock in today's rates and uh, remain, you know, guarantee that your license stays the same for at least three years uh, while taking advantage of today's lower rates. And we do, they, have, they really haven't uh, increased in the past couple years, but we do anticipate them to go up over the next couple years. So right now is really the best time to, to consider uh, renewing for multiple years if you're happy with that plan. If you're not, you know, we can talk about, uh, you know, some industry collections or converting you to a subscription license, things like that. Um, so I'm going to turn this over to Nigel. He's going to go through the question and answer session. I've seen some questions come through, and I just want to make sure that we address those and uh, get those answered for you uh, in a timely fashion and, and, and uh, get you guys on your way. So Nigel, go ahead and, and start with the, the Q&A session. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks again, Joe and Jorge, for giving us that uh, great presentation. It's definitely very informative um, about the, the progression that Autodesk is taking um, in regards to licensing and everything. So thanks again, both of you. Absolutely. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one that I'm seeing is from Alejandra, um, and she's asking uh, how these changes affect the free educational licenses. Yeah, great question. Uh, so Autodesk has always provided free educational licenses to any students, uh, any anyone that would like to to learn their software while you know being educated. Nothing is going to change for that. So if you have an education license now, or if you plan to get one in six months, Autodesk is still going to offer free educational licenses. Um, you know, for you and for any of your colleagues or, or you know, fellow students, if, if that applies to you. Definitely. Um, and it looks like I got a question from uh, Jose. Uh, and uh, can you network a combination of suites and collections moving forward? So 
I think I understand that correctly. So if we're talking about uh, perpetual licenses, which I think you are, um, you can network today up until the end of July, you can network an existing perpetual suite. Uh, so if you have a product design suite, perpetual license, it's standalone deployment, you can definitely uh, go forward and, and convert that to a network license, but that goes away after July 31st, 2016. So industry collections are going to be offered single user and multi-user. Those are the new terms uh, compared to standalone and network. Um, so they're not available yet, so you're not going to be able to convert anything just because they don't exist yet. However, after August 1st, when they are available, you'll have the option to purchase a, uh, a standalone a single user or a network multi-user license. For just the um, collections or individual products? Correct. Yeah, collections or individual products. That's correct. Perfect. And just to reiterate, you know, new versions of suites will not be available to purchase after uh, July 31st as well. So if you prefer a suite, if you prefer to, to get that, it's definitely recommended to do that within the next seven weeks because they will not be available after that date. Sure. And uh, got a question here from uh, Andy Johnson. Uh, and they have Product Design Suite Premium and Product Design Suite Ultimate. I'm sure a lot of other people in here have some combination of um, ultimates and premiums as well, mm -hmm. um, both on maintenance plans. Um, how will the cost change for a collection if we move to a collection? So the pricing has been announced on the Autodesk websites for standalone or single user collections. We do not yet have the multi-user pricing. However, that should be available in the next few weeks here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and share what we have with you after this, this presentation concludes. And once we get more information, we'll probably have another one of these to, to inform you about that. However, if you have an existing maintenance plan, it is the best, most cost-effective solution to keep that current. Uh, you know, a, a maintenance plan for a product design suite premium is about $800 per year. Uh, the collections are more than that. However, there's no initial investment on the collections like you had originally when you purchased your product design suite premium. So if you've already invested in a perpetual license, I would recommend to keep that current, to, to renew that for as long as possible if you have the budget to do so. Uh, I don't see really any value immediately converting that to an industry collection unless there's additional tools that you need like AutoCAD architecture or the factory uh, design utilities which are in the industry collections. If you're happy with what you have, keep that current, consider a three-year renewal, and uh, then just use what you currently have. I would say is the best course of action for you. For sure. And um, along the same lines, um, transferring perpetual, you can transfer a subscription to a collection um, at with a premium and ultimate at no additional cost. Um, but when you have a perpetual and you want to change that, change that to a collection, that hasn't been announced yet, correct? So, the details? Correct. So the details for that haven't been announced yet. So as of right now, there is not a, a, a path to go from a perpetual license to an industry collection rather than just purchasing an industry collection. So there's no trade-in value associated with that. Now, we do anticipate Autodesk will have a promotion or some way to get you from a perpetual license to an industry collection suite in the future, uh, but that's kind of speculative, and we don't really know the facts about that yet. So as of right now, your options are with a subscription contract, a desktop or a term-based subscription contract. If you have a premium or an ultimate version, they're going to allow you to migrate to an industry collection at no charge. AutoCAD design suites are excluded from this. You know, we can we can uh, talk about the specifics offline on an individual basis. Um, and then say, let's say you have an AutoCAD subscription license and you want to transfer to a term, you know, an industry collection. It's pretty simple. You just pay the difference between what you paid for the AutoCAD and for the cost of the industry collection suite. Uh, so that's uh, something that's available to you as well. And if you are, if any of you are in that specific situation, please reach out to us, and we'll put the numbers together for you uh, individually. Definitely. And, and as we get, go ahead, Corey. Oh, just so yeah, don't forget this is a first look, right? So, you know, we we have some a lot, quite a bit of information right on industry collections, but there's definitely going to be a lot more information coming uh, soon here before we get to August, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, and as we do get more information, you know, we'll, we'll get that out to you as soon as possible, um, whether that be uh, via our blog, which we actually released um, some of the industry collection information on first. Um, if you do follow the Kativ blog, um, you will get instant updates on when those things do occur, um, or follow us on social media, the same thing will happen. Uh, it looks like I have a question here from Alex, uh, and Alex asks, 
um, if this will be online so he can view it later or show it to some other people who need the information. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. So we record all of our events, including this and the Kativ AVA Autodesk Virtual Academy events. They're uploaded to our YouTube channel, and I think we'll send the link out after this as well. Definitely. Um, so you can easily share it with your colleagues. Give us a day or two to uh, you know finalize the recording and get that out to you in, in a way that's useful. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely do that. And also, I just want to, to, to let everybody know, I know a lot of you on this call are actually AVA subscribers, Autodesk Virtual Academy subscribers. Um, you know, we, we have uh, the weekly training sessions and we focus on different products and it's kind of a, a format like this uh, where we go live and, and bring to you interesting topics. Uh, the session Thursday is on AnyCAD in Inventor with one of the product managers from Autodesk. Uh, so it's similar to this. We'll go over a specific, uh, you know, item for you, and then we'll we'll upload that to our YouTube channel and make it available to you to watch at your convenience. Uh, so look out for that as well. For sure. Um, and I think that's it for questions. Unless we get a um, a last couple in, I'll give people a couple seconds to type something in. Um, and if not, I think we're good for uh, in regards to that. So again, I'd uh, I'd like to thank Joe for joining us today, as well as Jorge again. Yeah, thanks everybody for attending. Uh, feel free to reach out with us with any questions. Uh, again, we're going to send some emails after this with the actual information on pricing and uh, different features and things like that. So uh, feel free to, uh, to, to contact us and uh, have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Adios. Thanks, everybody.